Speaking of politics, back in the United States, Democratic presidential hopeful Bernie Sanders is now again making waves. After telling a crowd of his supporters that he would absolutely consider leveraging foreign aid to Israel as a way to pressure Jerusalem into acting differently. But for pro-Israel and Jewish Americans, this is yet another divisive policy from the left. Well, here to discuss this further, we have columnist and spokesperson for Democrats Abroad Israel, Mark Shulman, and Naftali Ben Simon, a journalist and member of the Likud Party. So, why are many Americans and Jews on the left so hostile towards Israel? I don't know if they're so hostile. Listen, we have to realize we forget in Israel that we've been occupying a people for 50 years. We may not have any solution. We can't get out of it. But it certainly doesn't look good. And we have to realize the fact that after 50 years, people say, well, just stop it, just end it, or don't act the way you do. Occupation is a very difficult and problematic thing. So in terms of the optics, it's really easy for people to say, well, the Palestinians must be right, or at least the Israelis are occupiers, and we need to put pressure on them to stop occupying. Now, generally speaking, one of the things that's happened in the left in the last 20 years or so is there's been a change from being who is right to who is weakest. So by and large, the left in the United States and all over the world, it's not only in the United States, supports whoever is weakest. Now, clearly in the conflict between us and the Palestinians, we're the strong party. The Palestinians are the weak party. So there's a tendency amongst many on the left to support the weak party, being the Palestinians. And the problem with um, presidential hopeful Sanders, who's not a Democrat, by the way, he's a socialist, and he's never been a member of the Democratic mm -hmm. Party, but leave that aside, is his views are simplistic. It's not that he's pro-Palestinian or that he's anti-Israel. I don't think he's anti-Israel. He thinks we should be acting differently, but he doesn't realize how complex the situation is. He thinks a magic wand, if we did X, Y, and Z tomorrow, there would be peace. I'm, a, I'm, not a viewer, I'm not of the view of the Likud in terms of what we should or should not be doing, but I also don't believe that there's a magic wand that can say, just do this, and tomorrow there'll be peace. And people want simple solutions. You know, that's the problem in life. We all want a simple solution. Complexity is a real problem in politics. Mm -hmm. Lines like, end foreign aid, that'll get them to do whatever we want, is a much more complicated word. So your thoughts? Well, <laughs> talking after Mark, it's, a, it's quite a, a challenge. But I will, I will try to, to summarize some of my, my thoughts. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, this hostile come from a, a much more psychological issues than a rational issues. It, it, it comes because uh, there is a lot of uh, a connection between the Likud party and the Republican, and especially between Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Trump. That makes many American Jews crazy. How come that there are those uh, two leaders become so powerful, mm -hmm. each one in his own country? That's one thing. The second is that yes, we have some problems and some issues in the dialogue between Israel and uh, the, the Jewish Union in the United States. And we, don't, we are not talking frankly about those issues, so we all uh, spread politics and politics and politics, and, and uh, Bernie Sanders, uh, it, it goes to the core issues of, of socialism or communism or something that r ridiculous, uh, Something is very fundamental. The Jews and the, and the state of Israel and the, and, and the United States of America are not only allies, it's much more deeper. And we just need now to improve our relationship and to talk frankly about the Jewish issue between Israel and the United States. Well, I mean, we've seen traditionally Israel has been a partisan issue, but now we're seeing bipartisan issue. a bipartisan issue. Excuse me. Now we're seeing that it's going to be slowly becoming a partisan issue. What are well, your thoughts I on think this? two things. When the time of the history is written of the Netanyahu era, I think one of the tragedies of the Netanyahu era will be the fact that he's at least 50 or 60 percent responsible for that. It's been his policy from the beginning to be much closer. He was identified with Republicans all the way along. He picked Ron Dermer to be his latest ambassador, someone who was active in the Republican Party. He's made that, you know, he took the bet on Trump. He won the bet, so to speak, in terms of the short term. But sometimes you worry about short term gain and long term pain. And I think this is very much the case. He's been very much identified with that side of the political spectrum. And I think it's going to be a problem for us long term. That's part of the problem. Mark, the but, other part of the but Obama contributed to that. 
He did, he, of course he contributed to that, but he, he didn't contribute but, but he to didn't that. contribute as much he as we make ignore, it. He ignored Netanyahu, he ignored he ignore almost Netanyahu. everything he, he, about Israel, he ignore, he, 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 and he discovered the Arab world. He, he contributed to that. He, he, he certainly contributed, but he certainly also didn't ignore the, this part of the world. He visited here, he signed the long-term agreement to give us aid for uh, 10 years, the longest MOU that we've ever had, to guarantee us aid over all, that whole period of time. He has not ignored us. He didn't give us the love we like. He didn't like Netanyahu. Well, guess what? Half of this country doesn't like Netanyahu. Okay, so Netanyahu okay. likes Trump. Okay, it's but, okay, okay, but it's the, not no, no, so it doesn't work that way. When you are the smaller country, the beneficiary of the aid, and the country that, wor that works very carefully to try to be bipartisan, you do not show the fact that you like one partisan side more than you like the other. I mean, it's hard not to, yeah. but, Net but Netanyahu has done it too much, too clearly. You know, when I speak to GOP friends in the United States, they would have been happy to elect Netanyahu president of the United States, no question <laughs> about it. I mean, so there's no question, he would be very, very popular in the Maybe GOP. Maybe one day. Maybe, but you know, he wouldn't be able to stretch that border in the United yeah. States sort of thing. All right, well, let's get back to Bernie Sanders' comments. Yes about cutting USA to Israel. I mean, would this even produce the desired effect that he wants? Would this bring peace with the Palestinians? Uh, once for all, we, should, we, we have to say that very clearly. It's nothing to do with uh, this foreign aid uh, to promote peace between us and the Palestinians. It, it's it's a, a foreign aid to promote a mutual project in security or, or missile programs or something like that that Israel and the United States are equal in these issues and in this contribution. So we don't need this money for eating or to live here because we are a rich country, we are a very successful country. This foreign aid, it comes for the benefit of the two countries, but it nothing to do, it will never, if you cut this uh, aid, it will never promote the peace because it, this is a different issue and I, I will say to Bernie Sanders, please, don't be so naive. It's a very clear issue that the Palestinians are refusing almost any solution that you put in the table, including this uh, a deal of the century by uh, President Trump. So it's nothing to do with foreign aid. Maybe it's good for a headline, but nothing else. And Mark, show me your final words. Yeah, listen, the foreign aid helps Israel in the sense that we don't have to build our own planes. It convinces us we are forced to buy American planes. Um, we are a rich country. It would require us raising taxes by 3% or some other small change. It's not a big percentage of our whole budget. Our whole budget is about $70 billion. This is $3 billion. It's about 3%. It's about 4%. It's really not that important. It's symbolic, and it's, by the way, we're the largest recipient of American foreign aid, and there's something really wrong about that when you look at us and how wealthy we are here as a country and how poor other countries are that we get so much foreign aid. So I'm actually in favor of us not accepting any more American foreign aid, maybe join projects, maybe join things funded, but it's certainly not a method that's gonna have any effect on Israeli policy, just the opposite. Israel, actually, you get things with Israel much more with honey than you do with vinegar. All right, well, that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.